And I, I believe it's a, a necessity, amen, that, that we need to be led. Praise God. Too many times we're led by a lot of other things, but God wants to lead us, amen? And so if we start out, I want to go here to the book of Hebrews chapter 8. And I want to start at verse 10. I'm going to go a few places here. And it's verse 8, chapter 8, verse 10. He said, for this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. And he's saying after those days, after actually the covenant, after those days, really he's talking about when Jesus dies and rose again. Amen. And he says, I will put my laws. And when you think of laws, you're not just his teachings, his instructions. Amen. In their mind and write them in their hearts. Well, how will he write it in our hearts? Well, he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He'll, he said that how he'll give us a new spirit. Amen. A new heart within us. And he says, and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Know him. But he says, For all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Doesn't matter what position you're in. Doesn't matter really how old you are. You know, because he said in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh in Acts, actually chapter one. And he said the daughters, the young men and daughters shall what? Prophesy. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams. And he said on the handmaidens and them, they'll prophesy. So from the least, even to the greatest, God can, God says, they'll know me. Amen. They'll have a relationship with me. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to know him like Adam knew him in the garden. Amen. He walked with him in the garden. And so when we see this in the old covenant, we, we talked about quite a few times, but in the old covenant, Right in the beginning, before man fell, God walked with man. Then after man fell, God dwelled with man. But then after Jesus came, he was with man. Amen. He was saying, Emmanuel, God with you. But then when he died and rose again, he's now in man. Amen. So he lives within us. That's why he says that, you know, in the, if you go to the book of John, I believe it's chapter 14, he says this. He, he says here, let me see. Um, I believe I know it's here in 14, but he says this, that um, in verse 17. Or 16, he said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Everyone should say forever, because that's where the Lord said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He said he wants to abide with you forever. And he says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Why is that? Because it seeth him not. See, they want to see it to believe it. 
but the Holy Spirit you don't see, just like air you don't see. Amen? You can know the effects of what he can do. You can sense what's going on within you or around you. But he said, you're not going to see him. Neither knoweth him. But you know him. For he dwelleth with you. And what? He shall be in you. See, under the old covenant, he dwelt with them. It was God dwelling among them. Amen. The Spirit of God would come on them at times around the king. King David, the Spirit of God came upon him. We talked about Samson, how the Spirit, when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he got strong and mighty in the things of God. That was the Holy Spirit coming upon them. They didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. I've heard people say that. They said, oh, the Holy Spirit was living in them. No. The Holy Spirit lives in us now. He came upon them when he would anoint, when they would be anointed, but he didn't live in them. Amen. He did. God dwelt among them. That's why they had the tabernacle. That's why they had the Ark of the Covenant. That's why God was behind the veil. And when that veil was torn from the top to the bottom, when Jesus died and rose again, what happened? The spirit was let loose from there. Amen. He wasn't no longer hiding. God wasn't behind it because he couldn't, man couldn't be with them. Amen. Like continually because he can't dwell among sin. And there was a proper way for man to go before God. They had to go with blood. They had to be holy and clean and everything before you even enter into the holies of holy. Otherwise you die. And if you want to look at it, you go to... Go to the book of uh, 1 Samuel when they thought the Philistines could take the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, God didn't have to use man to fight for him. God's holy. So they thought, hey, I'll just take the Ark of the Covenant. All this stuff just broke out. Hemorrhoids, rats, all kind of stuff was going on. People were dying. They said, listen, we can't keep this. Let's uh, take a bit, put it on a box and put some cattle. And then if the cattle go straight, we know this is God. But if they go crooked and all that, we know it wasn't. And that thing, they put some gold goids on there and everything to bring an offering to God. One, they didn't even know, but they re re learned real quick that was, he isn't to be played with like that. <laughs> and so they said, we can't even keep him in our camp. Let's let him go. So they put an offering and the cattle were even smart enough, the cows, to go and take the ark to where it was supposed to go. And they saw him come over the mountain while they were in the field. They said, there's the ark. And then they were... Uh, but, you know, there was a reverence there. Amen. So we're, we're going to talk a little, a little bit about being led. Amen. Because he said he dwelt with them, but he said he shall be what? In you. Amen. Well, Father God, we thank you for your words this day. We ask you to give us understanding. We ask you to open our eyes and ears, Father God, to hear what your spirit have to say to us, Father. We thank you for helping us, edifying us, teaching us, and guiding us. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor and praise. And we thank you, whatever gifts. We thank you for your manifestations of your Holy Spirit. And we always give you the honor, the glory, and all the praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Amen and amen. So here in the book of Galatians, I'm going to go to chapter 5. And read in verse 1, and then we'll drop down, amen, because I'm going to go a few places just to share about the word here, about being led. But he says in the Amplified, I want to read it a little different. It says, in this freedom, Christ has made us free and completely liberated us. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, amen? Christ didn't take us out of the world to bring us back in bondage. A lot of people, before they come to Christ, they're counting the cost to see whether I want to come to Christ because I'm going to have to give up stuff. Well, you know, when you come to Christ, the stuff you had anyways wasn't doing all that good for you. 
Because if you want to come to church, you want obviously something's going on in your life that you need to give up. But some people, when they hear it, they're thinking about all these different things that are going on and they're counting the cost like I have to give it all up. When you come to Christ, Christ will give you a new heart where you want it all away. Unless you're at a point at wit's ends where you're like, man, I can't take my life no more. I'm down to the bottom. You ain't got nothing to lose. Amen. But there is other people who think, well, that everything's all good in their life. They, they count in cost. Like, is my life going to have to change now? What if the Lord tells me to give up everything I got where they might want to hold on to that? So they're thinking and contemplating. But you're not really losing anything. You're gaining because you gain liberty in Christ. A lot of people want to come to, well, hopefully still, but want to come to America because they believe they have liberty, the pursuit of happiness. And in other words, you can go as far as you want in this nation without everyone getting involved in your life. I'm talking about to take it away. In other countries, you start getting so far, you got the government knocking at your door saying, we want a piece of that pie. Here, they'll just do it through taxes and stuff. That's fine. But there, they're like, hey, you start getting something. They, you don't know. They can come anytime and just take what you have from you. They can just come and say, well, th this was your house. This is ours now. This was your business. Well, we're going to just take it over now. It's doing pretty good. We want that, what you got. But here you do have liberty. Thank God. You know, we don't want to be like some others where they'll just start taking over and just take everything you got. And you're like, man, how can I get through this? But here you can go as far as we got the privilege that you can make as much as you want, you know, as long as you do it the right way. Praise God. And you can go as far as you want in that. But that's liberty that you have. You have a freedom. But freedom always has a cost to it. Amen. So he says right here where freedom in Christ has made us free and completely liberated us. So he says, stand fast then and do not be hampered or held ensnared and submit again to the yoke of slavery, which you have once put off. That's talking about the things of the flesh. You know, going back to what you used to do, amen, after God delivered you from it, amen? So this is what he wants us to do. And, and you got to guard yourself. You got to watch yourself because you can with things that are going on. The kids are being like influxed with so much stuff going on with phones, with technology, with everything that's coming at them so rapidly and so fast. It didn't work like that in the old, back a while back. You just talk about 20 years ago. You could go 20 back in the 90s. It wasn't even that fast like how it is today. People can't even keep up with the phones. Yet alone, I mean, the phones, they just keep coming out every day. They're, they're all competing. So much stuff is so rapid and changing. And look at what we got going on now. We had Google, which everyone was mad at. You know, it was Google search. They were saying they're their own entity. How can, you know, they drain out all the competition? Well, you think that's it now? Now you got the other thing coming out, AI. And AI is even beyond Google. You don't have to search no more. This thing talks to you. It tells you. It's trying to control and guide people's lives. Instead of relying on, like, okay, now you could just, you type in, you tell Google, what's this mean and that. This thing, they even showed this AI. They had someone, I just saw the other day, they had it hooked to their mind. The person couldn't talk. And they were conversating. They had the face of a person. I don't know how, how much this is, but they had a, you know, a face. They'll use the AI like a person that's there on the screen while the person's there. And the, the, the lady couldn't, 
never talk. You know how they use gestures. So they had something plugged, like they put it in her head. And then they all say, what time are you coming home? And the thing would speak through the TV. And it was, and she would look and laugh because the thing was actually saying what she wanted to say, but it was working through it to speak through the TV so she, the, the, the man could understand her. I don't know if it was his daughter or wife or what, but uh, it was talking and then it said, are, are you going to be late or uh, what time will you be back? And asked, and he can talk back. And this person couldn't even talk. I mean, this thing's becoming like, I mean, it's like a self-developing computer that does it. It was made a while back, but it's something that evolves. It, I, it isn't like a total, I think, owner of it. It's just something where it gathers all the information because technology is just growing rapid that it can just like literally tell you a lot of things. Like, I I don't know how far I even got involved in that thing. One person said, hey, you just ask what how to do something. It'll tell you how to guide you, how to fix it and do things. So it's eliminating a lot of stuff where people can become reliant on what it does to help. But see, God doesn't want us to be so guided by things and relying on things he wants us to be guided by him amen so he tells us to stand fast in the liberty wherewith christ has made us free amen because the world it's moving quick and knowledge is increasing very rapidly like never before that we've seen things Things are going to be changing so rapidly. I mean, they got the computers in your cars. They want to put it in your homes. They put it in your hands. They put it wherever you got. You got something that's there. That's some type of technology like uh, Google. It used to be maps. I remember just looking at good old map and looking at how to get to where we need to go. It was kind of fun then. You have to make sure you drive. Now you just got the... You got the Google, you got the GPS. And I ask people, the younger people, yeah, do you know this road and that? They like, I don't know the roads. I just go follow whatever they tell me to go. Man, you, how you going? You need to know roads and streets. I'm telling you, you can't listen to that thing because, well, if one day all that shut off, you don't even know which way. I, I'm very apt in how, how direction is because me, I don't care about the thing. I want to know the name of the road and what street it is so I can know I don't have to rely on, well, the GPS is taking me all the time, you know, because if you if you understand direction, You'll know what north and south is, the direction. You'll know east and west, and the roads are meant that way, what goes north and south and what goes east and west. So when a person seems to get lost, what ends up happening? You know you if you go north, you're going to hit somewhere, will get you back on the road again. I, I've known that, and I, I'll take – I could be somewhere – I don't need the Google map, but I know if it's north, if I got to go to 41 over here, all I got to do is keep going straight down this way. If it takes me a different way out the way, I'll know I'm just headed north. I got to go that way to get to where I'm going to go. Amen? Uh, upwards, whether I hit 75, 41, but if I got to get south, I got to go down a road that's going that direction so I can run into it. And see, sometimes, man, I ask a lot of them, I don't, I don't know nothing. I just turn in the, I type in the thing. I just follow that so they don't have no sense of direction or what streets and names there are. It's like people today, if you ask them, well, what's their phone number? I don't know. Let me look on. The, everything's on the computer. Well, what's their name? It does, does the phone tell you their name, too? Because if you don't know that, you want to get acquainted with names just like streets. Amen. And people. Praise God. But God wants to direct us. Amen. So he says this to stand fast 
in the liberty with where with, with Christ has made us free. And he says this, we'll drop down to 16 in the Amplified. I want you to see something because I'm just opening, but we'll get into this. He said, but I say, walk and live habitually. You know, not just certain times, but he said habitually in the Holy Spirit responsive to and controlled and guided by the spirit he said responsive to meaning you're being responsive you're being alert amen controlled not in a way that you know you're under dominant power no -uh. being controlled where you allow him you give him the right to go ahead and lead amen and guided by the spirit then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of the human nature without god see when you when you allow god to guide you then you're not giving room for your flesh to guide you you know when people don't got nothing to do where are they going to give into the cravings of the flesh. Like if I ask you working, you doing if they ain't if a man ain't got no job or nothing, what what are you gonna do? Because God told man in the beginning to do something. You know, he told him tend the garden, keep it, and God, you know, to dead. So it's built in man to do something. And so when you occupy your time doing things something, you're not given desires of the flesh, the opportunities, the cravings to do, because whatever you don't do of God, you're going to do something that's not of God. Amen? You're going to do something. I don't know whether it's sitting around watching television all day, doing the phone, or wow, some people sit on the porch, watch everybody, whatever it's going to be. But God wants us to be productive. Amen? And he wants us to be led by him. So he said, walk and live habitually and be responsive and controlled by the spirit. And he says this, verse 17, he said, for the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit. See, a, a lot of times people are wrestling and fighting. The Lord wants to do something in your life, but sometimes the flesh is fighting against it. And he says, that's why we, when we stay in tune with God, we read to get in the word. Amen. It's important to read the word daily. I mean, it is important because if you're not, what's going on in your mind? If you're not reading the word, you know, getting your time with God. Amen. He said, for the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are opposed to the flesh, godless human nature. For these are antagonistic to each other, continually withstanding and in conflict with each other, so that you are not free, but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. So there's a, a fight going on, a war. But it doesn't mean... The flesh has to win, amen, because the flesh is already dead, praise God, because when you accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you. He's alive. It's learning to be led and guided by him. So he says this in verse 18, but if you are guided and led by the Holy Spirit, you are not subject or under the law, meaning a bunch of works of the flesh. Amen. So the word this to be led means this. I'm going to read a few things. The New Testament word means a go. Amen. It means a go, A G O. That means led means to be led or leaded. Amen. What's lead? Lead is short from leader. Amen. A leader leads. So if there's a leader there in front of you, like you got uh, Boy Scouts, they got a, a leader or Girl Scouts there to lead the children. Amen. They're there to be a guide or you're at a zoo. 
or whatever, you're a tourist, you have a guider. Amen. It means same thing, guide, lead. They're there to guide you, help you in which way you need to go. Amen. They know the route to take. They already been there. So they work around the area. They know where you need to go. Amen. So you don't go off somewhere, get eaten, bit by an alligator, get slayed by some lion. If you're on a safari, amen, because you have a guide with you. Amen. You don't want to get trampled on by a giraffe, get hit by a rhino or something at the truck, but you want a guide. Amen. So they can help you go the right way and know where to take you. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit does in you. He's your guide. Amen. He's not there to lead you to danger. It may look like it sometimes that you'll go, but the Lord's with you. He wouldn't take you somewhere he hasn't been, and he won't take you somewhere where he won't be able to help you. Amen. He led Jesus when he went to go be baptized by John the Baptist, his cousin. And then he came up out of water. He saw the Holy Spirit descend upon him like a dove. And then after he fulfilled everything he was supposed to, what did the Holy Spirit do? It said right there in Luke 4, it said he drove them into the wilderness. Now, does that look like a place you want to go all the time? Nah. -uh. But there's a purpose why he did that. It was to fulfill something. Amen? Because because God took the children of Israel in the wilderness. And they were supposed to go what? They were there 40 years. Jesus went for 40 days to overcome what they couldn't overcome. Amen? to give them victory, what they didn't give victory out of. Amen. So he went to defeat that for us. And he went in the wilderness also to be tempted by the devil, like Adam was tempted in the garden, but he showed he had the victory. Amen. But, it, you know, he led them there, but he was showing them greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you don't have to be afraid if the Lord takes you somewhere. He's with you. He won't ever leave you or forsake you. So he's called a guide. It's also called being driven, which we just saw that Jesus was drove into the wilderness. It also means to be carried or to bring forth. There's another word that it also means. It means to be induced. Induced means this, to be persuaded or influenced, influencing someone to do something. It's persuading or influencing someone to do something. You know what the Holy Spirit does? He wants to influence you and persuade you to do something that he has you to do that's what grace means grace means god's divine influence upon your heart so when the holy spirit comes in you he influences you that's what it means he he it's a induced but it's an influence in your heart i've had a time when I was younger in the things of God, I had a time where he'll keep saying it over and over and over again because he wants me to know his voice. He's influencing me and he's persuading me to do what he's asking me to do. Amen. So when you persuade someone, what happens? You keep asking them. You keep telling them because you want to persuade them to do this for the right thing. Amen. So you keep telling them and tell them the Holy Spirit will do that in your life because he wants to influence you to go the right route. Amen. In the Old Testament, the word lead, because I'm about to go and show you some scriptures. It says it means or the rock. It means to walk, to tread. An archer, like one that shoots a bear, a bow. It, it, it means to tread or to tread on. 
It also means an archer to string a bow by bending. Amen. When you bend, when you got a string on a bow, it bends. You pull it back. That's what an archery does. Gee, God's like an archer. He's bending us. He's pulling us so we can go the right way. Amen. That means to bend yourself. We'll we'll see. It means to guide, to lead, and to shoot through or thrash so it means to shoot i want you to see something if we go to book of numbers 24 right here this is the lead numbers 24 and verse right here verse 16 or 15 he said this is time where balaam was talking to balak Balaam was the one that we know the story if he was ever in Sunday school and all that where the donkey talked to Balaam. They call him the dumb prophet. Well, it said he was dumb because he wasn't listening to God and he wanted to go do his own thing. And the Lord told him, unless I tell you in the morning to get up and go, then you go. He didn't tell him that guy, the man said, hey, I'll give you some money and all that. And he got up and he went his own way. And then an angel was sitting there with the sword and the donkey had sense enough to move out the way. The man couldn't even see it or understand it. And the donkey was trying to save his life and then he finally flipped himself to the ground and the guy began beating him Balaam and he goes you dumb donkey why didn't you take me you know this and he goes then God had to open his mouth say why are you beating me he goes I've been with you since I was little you raised me up and I have I ever led you wrong and then he's like no and he goes I'm trying to save your life there's an angel right in front you know I'm me paraphrasing there's an angel there is ready to kill us and then God opened the Balaam's eyes and then he saw what the angel and then he was real repent of but then after doing all that, the Lord led, led, told him to go ahead and go. He was on his way anyways, but he, because he was disobedient, he was about to go down the wrong path. That's what had happened. But here, Balaam said this. He said he took up a parable, and Balaam, the son of Baror, had said, and the man whose eyes are open had said. He had said, which he heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the visions of the Almighty falling into a trance. Verse 24, Numbers 24, 16. But having his eyes open, so he fell into a trance and his eyes were still open. In other words, God, you could be, you could be like this. I could be talking. The Lord begins showing me something, even though my eyes are open, that's falling into a trance. And he begins seeing what the Lord's showing him with his eyes open. And look at what he says. <clears throat> I shall see him, but not now. And I shall behold him, but not nigh or near. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. He says this, go back. He said, there shall, he said, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him. That's the word lead. I shall behold him, but not now. And there shall come. See that word he's talking about? There's going to come a time. There's going to shoot out a star out of Jacob. You know, they talk about shooting stars. Well, this word means shoot or lead. There shall come a star. There's going to be a star that leads out of Jacob. And if you go to the book of Matthews, what happened? The wise men knew about the star that was going to come. And what happened to the star? The star led them to where the child was. That was under the old covenant because God was on the outside leading them. What ended up happening? The angel, when they were coming before the Red Sea, an angel went before them. 
Amen. They, it was all on the outside. It wasn't something working on the inside. A lot of it was on the outside. He was leading them. And then when they got to the Red Sea, he came behind them. He was their rear guard. And there was a fire that was there to keep the enemy feral from the children of Israel, even though they were afraid. I mean, if you saw a big old fire, you shouldn't even be afraid. You should be waving over to them. Hey, what's up, Pharaoh? <laughs> yeah, this is my God. He's watching over us, but they were all still afraid. Like, how are we going to get out of here? The Lord got a fire of a cloud by them. And he said, this star will come out of Jacob. And that was what was to lead them still under the old covenant amen so they followed the star and that star led them right to the child that was being born jesus amen and that, that's pretty amazing in itself that here they knew to follow a star and that star was w w actually guiding them to where the child was going to be amen so there it is. It says there shall come, and that means, what is it? A shooting star. It's going to guide. It's going to lead them. Amen? Here in the book of Deuteronomy 11, it says this. This is the word it means to be led. Amen? It says this, Deuteronomy 11, 20, look at this, 20, uh, 22 for if you shall diligently keep all these commandments which i command you to do them to love the lord your god to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him you never what cleave means like a, a man shall leave his mother and father and what cleave to his wife he wants you to cleave to the lord like you would cleave to your wife amen so cleaving means to be glued. It means to be glued to them. Amen? That, that's what cleave is, is to be glued together. It's to be like entwined or tangled together. So he said, you're to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. You hold on to him, you're with him. Amen? Like if I have Pastor Sozi here. He says, you could stand up. Look, he said, you'll leave your mother and father, and what will I do? I, I, I'll cleave to my wife. <laughs> and then, what's it called? Yeah, to guide means this. If I'm a guider, I take her by the hand, and I say, here, come on, follow me. This says, what's it called? He only even got the camera. Do you got the cameras? Okay, you got two cameras. <laughs> so it says, I'm a guider, amen? So I'm all held hold her by her hand. And, and then I guide her. I, I'm leading her. Amen. I, I'm going to help her. And God says that in the book of, uh, you could sit down. God says that in the book of Isaiah, he'll guide them with their hand. Amen. We'll see it in scripture. But look at what he says here. Matter of fact, I didn't even want to go ahead of myself. But look, I, I'll show you here. He says, he'll drive out in verse 23. He said, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you. He's going to push them out. How does he drive them out? Man, he goes before you and moves them out the way. See, that's why you need to trust in the Lord. The Lord can move circumstances out of your way before you even get there. And you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourself. In other words, you'll go in there and you'll take nations See, God don't always have you just do little things. He'll have you go do big things that are greater than yourself because you got a greater one in you. And he said, here, you are a small nation. I'm going to make you take all these great nations over that are bigger than what you think you are, that you know it's not even you that does it, that it's him that does it with you. Because in the Old Testament, he was with them. Amen. He wasn't in them yet, but he was with them. He dwelt with them. And look at what he says this. 
or every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread, that's what lead means, to tread, shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, even from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall the coast be. And look at what verse 25 says. And there shall no man be able to stand before you. The Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread upon as he hath said unto you. See, that's just showing you here. The Lord's with you. And the Lord has the devil afraid of you. Because, see, the Old Testament, it was people the enemy was using. But today, in the spirit, the devil, he's afraid of you. So when you are led by God, you're actually treading. He's leading you to tread. You know that thing where it says tread on? It's at the Marine. They got the serpent, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, it tells them, don't tread on you. You tread on the enemy. Amen. And what's that? Meaning you're being led to go forth and nations become afraid of you, but you tread on them. Jesus said the same thing in the book of Luke. He said, every place that the soles of your feet shall go upon or tread upon, I've given unto you. Amen. And he said, no evil shall befall you. Or he said, you, he said, you won't even have to worry about because you nothing shall harm you. But he said, every place that your feet shall tread upon, I've given unto you. Amen. God, Jesus said the same thing. Wherever your feet tread, because why? In the new covenant, he's in you. Amen. You are Jesus' feet. You are his hands. You're his body. Amen. So whatever tries to come against you, it comes against the head, which is God, Jesus. Amen. Because you're his body. What's there to be afraid of? Because you're the body of Christ. Amen. You, each part is a member body part of Christ. You're in him. And so he says this, you'll tread. That's one of the words of lead. Here in Psalms 25, in verse 5, this means to be led, amen, to be guided. We're going to see. Look at this. 5 through 9, it says, lead me in tr thy truth. What's that? The word. The Holy Spirit is the truth. Amen. We'll worship God in spirit and in truth. And teach me. So lead me in truth and teach me. For thou art my God of my salvation, and on you do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Oh, Lord, look at that. And he says here, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he, therefore, will he teach sinners in the way. Amen. He'll guide them in the way. The meek will he guide. There it is again. Guide in what? Judgment and justice to be able to do justice. Amen. To do, 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 he talks about justice where you're able to do judgment. You just you judge what? The fatherless. Amen. You help them. Praise God. Those who can't help themselves. And the meek will he teach his way. So he'll lead you and he'll teach you and he'll guide you. Amen. He wants to be a guide to you, praise God. The Holy Spirit's there in you today, amen. Back then, he was guiding them because he actually went before them. He'll, he said, my angel, in the book of De Exodus 15, he said, my angel, or Exodus 23, he said, my angel will go before you. And he said, don't try to transgress against him for he won't forgive you. But he was saying his angel was going right before them and he was taking them before nations. Amen. He had the angel right there, a big one too. 
So here in Isaiah, we're reading one more here. Isaiah 52 says this in verse 9. It says, break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. How did he make bare his holy arm? Well, who's his arm? His hand is Jesus. Amen. His right hand. His arm is his people. He, he's flexing. Amen. His strength in the sight of all nations. Amen. That God is strong. He could take out the nations before him. Amen. He came to conquer nations. And the, and the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. What did he do? He made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. If you think about it, Jesus was on the cross. He made him bare before all. That wasn't just only his hand. He said his whole arm. On the cross, he made him bare. He wasn't there like with clothes on. He was bare in front of them all. But that was also his holy arm that all nations would see what he did. But what? All the ends of the earth was going to see the salvation of God on that cross. Amen. And they saw it because he died. And what did he do? He showed his strength. He rose again. They couldn't keep him down. Amen. I'm not preaching this more. I'm just teaching some word. But he says, look at what he tells us to do in verse 11. He says, depart ye, depart ye. Go out from here. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. And what does he say here? For you shall not go out with haste in a hurry, nor go out by flight in a rush. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel shall be what? Your rear reward. He'll be your protector. He'll be your rear guard. Amen. He'll be the one that will back you up. He's not just in front of us. He said he's behind us too. That's why when they went before the sea, Red Sea, he went before them. But then when they stopped at the sea, he went behind them. When they crossed it, he was behind them, keeping Pharaoh back from going. Then he said, okay, we'll let Pharaoh and his company go after we already passed through and let them go. And then I'm just going to close the water over them and just wipe them out of the sight. The enemy's dumb enough to go ahead and do it anyways. He thinks, oh, they could go through it. I'm not even paying attention. He ain't even thinking, wow, this is a miracle. Pharaoh should have been like, man, I never seen the Red Sea. He was so focused on getting the children of Israel. If you saw the Red Sea open, he should have just turned around and went home. Because he's thinking, well, I'll go ahead and go through the Red Sea. And it didn't open for you. It opened for them. It's going to close on for you with you in it. That's what ended up happening. It closed on him and all of them. And then Pharaoh was just standing there, and he went home like, man, I didn't even, uh, you know, he just saw all his, the whole troops, all of them devoured by the sea. So that's how the Lord will do your enemies. That's how he does your past. Amen? That's why it's called the Red Sea. The blood is what covers your past. Amen? It's called Red it covers it. Amen. So he said he'll lead. He goes before you. That's what being led is. Amen. And that's what God wants to do. He did it with them in the Old Testament. But in the new, he leads us, but he leads us from within. Amen. That's why he said, I'll be with you. I'm with, he dwells with you, the Holy Spirit. But he said he shall be in you. Amen. So he wants, he's doing an inside work. He's no longer leading you up by outside things. He's leading you by the inside, by his voice, amen, by his Holy Spirit. Sometimes he may do it 
by angel, amen, because it does say it in the word. It shows us in the book of Acts that he did lead them, amen, but he wants you to be led by his Holy Spirit, amen, to be guided, to be in, but what, be influenced and persuaded by his Holy Spirit, praise God. I'll close with this. If we go over here to the book of Romans, chapter 8, amen. It says this, and we, we all know this scripture. But he says here, uh, verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors to owe, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. It says, for if you live after the flesh, you'll die because the flesh is already a dead thing. But if you through, that means through you enter in, amen, the spirit do mortify or put to death the deeds of the body you shall live. And in other words, you don't let the flesh conquer you, you conquer the flesh, amen. And he says this. For as many, verse 14, for as many as are led, for as many as are being driven, for as many are, as are being brought forth, for as many as are being carried, for as many as are being induced, amen, they are by the Spirit of God, influenced, persuaded, they are what? The children of God of God. Amen. So he and we'll, we'll see what it is to be led by the spirit. Praise God. We're going to go more into Galatians, but I just want to just cover this part real quick. And, I, and then we'll close. What, what's it mean to be led by the spirit it means to be led for direction. Go here to Mark chapter one. Look at this. Now, I'm just going to read this real fast, these three things, and then we'll finish. We'll go and continue next week. But here in John, Mark chapter 1, it says this in, in verse uh, 33. It says, in all, or verse 32, and at evening when the sun did set, they were brought forth unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. He, and in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Amen. Now he prayed to seek the Lord, to hear from him in which way he should go for direction. And when they had found them, they said unto him, all men seek you. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns. How did he know that? That means to go. The power of being led is to be going. Amen. He said, let us go unto the next towns that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And so he led them to go to the next town. He could have stayed where he was at, but he went to pray and hear from the Lord. And he led even the disciples to where to go. He still leads us today. He told them, let us go into the next towns. He's going to tell you, let's go here for direction. Amen. I'm not talking about GPS. I'm talking about the global positioning system within you, which is the goal, global Holy Spirit. Amen. The positioning you to go where he's directing you. So he, he's the positioning system. Amen. He wants to position you where you need to go in your life. Amen. 
So the Lord spoke to them. He's still speaking today with you. Amen for direction. This is also for uh, providence. Look at this in Matthews 21, verse 1. Look at what he says here. And when they drew near unto Jerusalem, they were come to Bethany unto the Mount of Olives. Then send Jesus to then send Jesus to disciples. And what did he say? He says this, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straight away you shall find an ass tied in a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. This is provision. He told them to go into the village over. Look, go back. He told them to go to the village over against you. He, they knew where that was. And he said straight away. That means immediately. When you go there immediately, it won't be you'll be waiting there a long time. He said immediately you'll find the donkey tied and you'll find a colt, a little donkey with her. Loose them and bring them to me. Amen. He said to loose him, and what does he say next to him? He said, if any man say anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. So he said that as soon as you go there, immediately they'll, you'll see it. Immediately they'll let you have them. Amen? And what happened? He says that right here, verse 6, and the disciples went. And did as what? Jesus commanded. That's a charge. Amen? Commanded them. They went what he told them say. Just because you don't see Jesus physically to tell you what to do, he's going to tell you within you and tell you where to go. And what happened? When he commanded them, they did it. And look at what happened. Verse 7, and brought the ass and the colt and put them on their clothes, and they set them, set him thereon. Look at that. That was provision. He told them to do that, and they did it, and things took things happened the way he said it. See, if you just be led by the Lord and do what he says, you'll see things take place. Amen in your life. I mean, you're looking at it as reading, well, that's Jesus physically there. Okay, the, he was with them because they could physically see him, but now you got him within you. Amen. He's living in you 24-7. Praise God. Jesus couldn't be with them 24-7. He even had to get away to pray and hear from God. Now he's, God's using him to speak through him to us, within us. Amen by the Holy Spirit. Look at this. This is even the last one right here for the time being because we're going to close. Matthew 26. Look at this. This is um, verse 40. Oh, I'll start here. He says, verse 36. I'll read it real quick. Then come a Jesus with them into the place called Gethsemane. And he saith unto him, Sit ye here, while I'll go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. That then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cow pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And as he cometh, his disciples findeth them asleep. He saith unto them, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, for the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went again a second time, saying, O Father, if this cup <clears throat> may be passed away from me, may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came to them, found them asleep, and their eyes were very heavy. And it says, he left them, went away again and prayed the third time. 
saying the same words. Then cometh he to the disciples and saith to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed in the hands of the sinners. In the hands of the sinners. Look at this. This is in a time of emergency. The Holy Spirit will wake you. He'll tell you when it's going. What does he say? He said, rise. Let us be going. See, that's a quick thing. The, you could be somewhere. The Holy Spirit will quicken you and say, do this now. Go here now. <clears throat> I told the story before. I remember... They told us at Church Up North, a police officer was off duty, and he pulled up to a gas station in Detroit, and he carries, obviously, his gun, and then the Holy Spirit quickened him fast and said, listen, he told him, get your gun out now. So he pulled his gun out, and a guy ran right up to his door with a gun and told him, they put it to the window and said, give me your money now you know, was going to carjack and give me the car. So he had his gun in his lap and he shot through the door and shot the guy real quick. But I'm just saying the Holy Spirit told him what to do fast to do it before he was going to get killed, you know? So it was an emergency here. Jesus told them to rise up and let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that does betray me. See, the Holy Spirit lives in you. He'll tell you things that may be emergency. Don't go there. Don't do this. You look at testimonies at time of 9-11, you could see what happened. Some people that were supposed to go to the building never went. There was testimonies of people who never missed a day of work in their life and somehow they couldn't get on the train or they missed a the train, they woke up late. Sometimes, see, they were in deep sleep. The Lord can put a deep sleep on someone. He did it with Adam. He did it with Saul so David could go to him. But sometimes he put a deep sleep to keep you from doing, going somewhere where you're not even supposed to go. And you don't know what goes on before. God does. Amen? At that time, I wouldn't mind being late to work. <laughs> Praise God. Because, hey, that was a good excuse. But some people missed their flight. They missed a lot of things that transpired. And there was people that were even there that were able to get out, too. You know, so a lot of people always focus on all the other sides, but the world ain't going to tell you how people escape, how they knew the Lord and the Lord did this for them. They just want to focus on all the bad stuff, you know, that goes on. But obviously we celebrate the people who did things. Amen. But God wants to guide you. He wants to lead you. Amen. In whatever direction or path that he has for you, he wants to be your leader to lead you in the way we should, which way you should go. Amen. And he has a voice. And he said, a stranger, you won't follow. Amen. So we're going to close and we'll continue some more because we're just getting into this. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time right now. And Lord, we thank you because your desire is always to lead your people. And you said you will never leave them astray. You said you are the sheep of your flock, the shepherd of your flock. We are your sheep and you made us. We didn't make ourselves. And Lord, if we missed it anywhere from hearing your voice, today we want to repent because you don't haven't yet stopped speaking. You're the God who still speaks. And you said your Holy Spirit shall be in us forever amen you said he's our teacher and he'll guide us lord we thank you for today to speak to your people we pray right now that sensitivity will come that they'll be able to hear your voice lord and be led by you led by you to do something 
to go somewhere to say something hallelujah thank you father to not go somewhere to not do something thank you for leading them lord in the name of jesus let's say this together lord jesus i know your voice a stranger i do not follow i know your voice because you live in me i thank you for speaking to me for directing me for guiding me in jesus mighty name thank you today for going before me and preparing my place i yield and surrender to your holy spirit and will not fulfill the lust of the flesh forgive me for missing it and i thank you that my ears are open to you to hear in jesus name hallelujah thank you lord father i thank you today and give you glory honor and praise father that you're going to guide each person hallelujah by your spirit and we give you glory honor and praise for doing it in jesus precious mighty name hallelujah and father uh, one last question if you don't know the lord god desires you he wants you to know him because he knows you already and he wants to lead you and direct you and the only way to get that direction and guidance is by his holy spirit but to have the holy spirit you need jesus in your life and if you don't know him we want to give you the opportunity or maybe you have known him and you went astray well today is your day of opportunity to come back or to come to know him so he can lead you a better life and guide you in a right way all you have to do is say lord jesus i ask you today to be my lord and savior to forgive me of all the things i have done i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me so i can have the liberty and freedom in christ jesus i ask you today to come into my life give me a new heart and a new spirit in jesus mighty name i thank you lord jesus for forgiving me and making me free in jesus mighty name if you prayed that prayer we want to give you material we want to get, send it to you you just write us let us know we want you to know you're blessed you're an overcomer you're victorious god is there to encourage you strengthen you to be your help and to direct your life for the best he has awaiting for you we just want you to know you're loved and to know jesus to grow in jesus than to show jesus why we're here be blessed have a abundance prosperous week in jesus mighty name hallelujah amen